because I read your book you sent me a couple of weeks ago. I finished it coming on the way on the train down today. For a man who the reputation you have, the people that you know, to be going to Grendon and the, the the names and the stories from men uh, raping kids, killing kids, um, serial killers, people killing their mum and dad, the people who are going to meet prostitutes and and hitting them with hammers and. How was how was that then for a tough man to, like yourself to have the reputation to be surrounded by these fucking nasty nasty people? I think I think for me, it was about make it, it was about mindset. Mm -hmm. It was about it was about saying you know what as much as these people are the most repulsive people you're ever going to meet and they they've committed some of the most heinous crimes. It wasn't about them. It's about me. Mm -hmm. And I said like, you know I'm not a rapist. I'm not a paedophile. I'm not a child killer. So I can't really link in with these sort of people in their mindset. I and mean, I don't think I ever would. But there was people there that were in for robbery. You know, there were normal murderers and, you know, mainstream prisoners. There were quite a few there. So I knew I would be able to function with them. And if they can do it, Noel can do it. So the fuck could I. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because the first time you go there, you're, you're met with people, maybe two or three people. You don't really know their story. But you can always tell a shifty fucker. You can always tell someone it's I think, I think not we, quite yeah. right. But when you met them, it's like everyone stands in a circle and you... They're telling you their crimes. You know, I've, I've, I found it really hard. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. For me, the hardest thing in the world, being a father, is for someone to stand in front of me and tell me they just killed a kid. Hmm. And that was the first guy I spoke to was, was a guy called Sam. Uh, he, he said that, he, that his girlfriend had gone out. And he was, he was so angry that she had gone out. When he changed the baby's nappy, his little girl, that he bent her back and he punched her. So he broke her back, her, uh, her, everything, uh, he punched her, you know, I think he had about 87 bruises and everything on her, you know. And I looked at him, I, you know, I, I've wanted to kill him, you know. But the only thing that I could go back to was, the only tools that I had was my sarcasm. And I said, you know what, mate, I understand you. Because I've got girls as well, I've got little girls, and I know how spiteful they can be at six fucking months old. So he just, he, he sort of just went white and fucked off. So, so for me, using sarcasm was a way of getting through it, you know. But it didn't get any, any better, because the next guy I met... You know, because yeah, it, was, it was about owning your owning your offence. You know, there's nowhere to hide in Grendon. You had to say, I was an arm robber. You know, I put my hands up. Uh, and But every time I, I spoke to someone, it just got worse and worse and worse. You know, raping old women. You know, I met a guy, he, he, um, he said he met a prostitute and he bit her tongue off. Um, you know, I was, and, and in, you know, I can always remember the one that really stood out for me was a guy called Gavin. He said that he'd split up from his wife and uh, they were uh, they were going through a divorce, but he decided to kill himself. And um, he started drinking at about one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock, and uh, he started having a pill. And, and uh, gradually he was fading and then his daughter came down. He had two daughters, one nine and one six. And um, she said, Daddy, Daddy, why are you crying? Why are you upset for? He said, I'm going to heaven. And she said, Daddy, can I come? And I, I know for me, I, I know, and he, he said, yeah. And he started giving her a drink and her a fucking pill. And, uh, and then he was describing, he was reliving it in front of me. And then he said she didn't pass that, but she, she didn't die. So I got a, um, a bag out of the drawer in the kitchen and put it over her head. And she was scraping, you know, my hands and my face. And I thought, God. bring back a lot of emotions yeah it just shows you how far you've come though so it does it shows you how far you've come so when you started going through all that and realising wait a minute did you ever doubt that you'd made the right choice I think at that, 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 that particular moment I was it yeah. I remember going to myself sitting behind the door and thinking fucking hell why are you here and that's when I sort of justified my, my I sort of justified my criminality with them I thought, so you know what? There's no way in a million years I'm like these fuckers. And then I started saying, you know, I'm a criminal, I'm a, I'm a robber, but I don't hurt people and I don't do this. And I started justifying it. And then I, you know, I, I sort of analysed it and I thought, you know what? He's done this, he's a scumbag. He's a, he's, yeah, I could never do that. But, but I'm, I, you know, it was, it was that not, not for me to walk away and, and then convince myself or justify my whole existence by, by him. You know, you know, why should I... Why should this geezer stop me from actually finding out who I was? Mm -hmm. So I wasn't going to blame him. I wasn't going to think I was better than him or anything else. I was just going to fucking put him aside and move on with the therapy. And that's what I did, you know. And the next person I met was even worse. 
the next person I met was even worse. You know, you got, you know, you got. You know, I was talking to people that, that that took a golf club to their 18 month old kid and killed them. I was talking to the guys that had, had got to put a baby because I had an argument with his sister, put the kid in a in a, a pillowcase and smashed the fucking life on the side of the table. And I'm actually doing. Um, so how the fire, fuck, Terry? If you're going through that therapy and trying to change your mindset, but living next to that, does that is that not like kind of chalk and cheese? It's like you're trying to get help to change yourself, but also listening to these stories where it's going to mentally scar you for life as well. I think what it, I think what it was, and as much as as much as I was going through that full process, I think I had to go through it with them to learn tolerance because I was never a tolerant person. I could never suffer for anyone, falls gladly or anything. But I think being with them, you know, gave me tolerance because you know what, I could have killed them all. Yeah. You know, in fact, someone did kill someone while I was there. So I can, I can understand why he went. There's their moments of, I, mm -hmm. I, I went through them so many times where I wanted to just go in the cell, shut the door and kill him. But, you know, you know, I then had to take on board. I've got, I've got kids. So yeah. My kids because are in your book as well, I think, yeah. You're very hard on yourself because you blamed yourself from leaving your kids and doing armed robberies. But then being with these people, it realises, wait a minute, I'm not justifying any crime, but it realises, right, you're not really that bad a guy compared to some other people. Did it give you a wee bit of that mentality that you're not as bad as most people? Yeah, you know, you know the victimology that, that Grendon uh, sort of, you know, churns out on a daily basis that we've all got victims and we're all the same. But the more I went through it, I realized that no, we're not. You know, and I'm not gonna be an apologist for that or to anybody. I realized that there is a difference between someone that rapes kids. There is a difference between someone that rapes uh, old women. There is a difference someone killed, killing old kids. You know, I'm not like them. So we, I think we have to change the policy of Grendon simply because you can't group me in the same as them people. How long were you into your sentence, Terry, before you went to Grendon? I was, I was only in there uh, just over a year. You know, I wanted to hit it quick. I yeah. wanted to do something positive. I didn't want to sit around in the system, uh, wasting my time going through the same old shit. So what is the system at Grendon? What's the, the policy? What is it you do when you go there? The policy is uh, you sign a compact, you don't hit anyone. You don't use any violence. Um, so what happens is there's a process. You, um, you do an induction course. Uh, I'm on that induction three months as a three months uh, induction. Most, most guys I've met there lasted a week. One lasted one day. Um, if you get first first week, second week, third weeks, and you you see yourself getting through that three months, so there's a little little things like going into the office and reading the paper in front of the screw. You know, I've never done that before. They was always the enemy. So that process is about humanising them and getting to know them, to speak to them, and actually instead of calling them gov, calling them by their first name, and then calling you by your first name. So over that period, it sort of it it, 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 it seemed to work. Uh, also, uh, eating with other people. There was a dining room now. So I spent years and years in prison uh, not speaking to anyone while I was eating. Now I'm on a table with people. You know, it's, it's, it's quite surreal. Um, and for the first time in my life, I actually wrote about how I felt. You know, so I got, a, I gave me a pad and I wrote down how I felt, how I felt about meeting the people, the emotions and, and that evoked in me and, and, and how I wanted to, to do them. And as I read it back over the months, I started to think. I started writing things about my family, my kids, and everything else. And for the first time, seeing it in black and white, I started to to understand it. So that that process of going there, and also dealing with boredom for the first time, because you weren't allowed to watch telly in the daytime. You know, you had no television, nothing. You, so when I first got there, there, was millions of plants around the fucking place, and I kept wondering why. Why is there so many plants? Why is it so clean here? You know, and then I realised that boredom is, is is something that I've never been good at. You know, is is the reason I'd womanise or women I take drugs and everything else. But being there, after a period of time, you start to do things that you wouldn't normally do. I started making cuttings of plants and then planting them. I started cleaning up, and because it was I was so bored, I started to then talk to people on a level. Because when you stop talking about crime, when you start, because what happens when you meet criminals is that you. You relate to each other. You 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 have alliances because of who you know, the jobs you've done, and you know in that area. All of a sudden, you're actually talking to people. Admittedly, some of them are, 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 the, are the scum of the fucking earth, but you're actually 
you're actually talking to them on a completely different level about their families, about work, about everything, you know, about psychology, about criminality and everything. But you're, the discussions you're having are completely different from, from the criminal side. So over a period of, of that 12 weeks, you then start to develop different social skills. You start working. You start listening to all their crimes and all of a sudden you realise that you can't deal with this. There was a few that couldn't and they went back to the system. And I realised that uh, after a few weeks, I, I was capable of actually going to the next level. I thought the next level was going to be a lot easier, but it just got worse. You know, if I thought these guys were the worst of the worst, when I went to the wing, it just got worse. You know, the things I heard was unbelievable. How know? did you deal with that? You know what? I just had to turn off. I just had to say to myself, you know what? It's ain't about them. You know, every now and then I would blame them for my behaviour. Yeah. Every now and then I would, I would, uh, I would want to do something to them. But you know what? It was wasn't about them. Now I, I'd gone through that process. I I passed that. This was about finding out who I was. You know, finding yeah. about you know talking about talk. You know. You know, sorting about my childhood experiences, the traumas that I went through, and and putting that to bed. You know, because like you know, over that period, I, I watched grown men who were really angry. And once they started speaking, that little valve opened, and that anger went. Mm -hmm. So then, when I, when I saw it working, because I didn't think it worked, you know, of a, you know, I went there for probably put it for all the wrong reasons, an easy life. Yeah. You know, but as it started to work, and I started to engage in it, and I saw the things happening, I actually started to get a belief in it.